Welcome to Programming for Kids with Scratch 2. I'm Mike Lehman, and thanks for joining me. This series of half-hour shows uses Scratch to introduce computer programming to kids, about fifth grade and up, and curious adults, too. You'll learn all about programming in Scratch in this series. It covers loop blocks, repeat, repeat until and forever, decision blocks, including if and if else, procedure blocks, variables, lists, messages, events, clones, even microphone and video webcam input. I'll create many programs, including games, storytelling, drawing pictures, and programs that demonstrate important programming concepts, including objects, threads, and polling. This series is all about doing and shows the creation of all working programs from start to finish. Scratch is a great first programming language and can have children very quickly creating and presenting stories and creating fun animations, all while learning valuable critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, and the fundamentals of programming without any of the confusing and detailed syntax. Scratch presents programming commands as single blocks that are easily snapped together to make programs with very little typing. Don't let the ease of Scratch fool you into thinking that there's little here. Scratch programs can do a lot of things. Very little math is needed to make fun programs, and I give the very few equations that I'll use in a handful of about 50 challenges. Scratch is free and freely available from a highly regarded university, MIT. With your web browser, you can create, share, and save your Scratch programs if you want to. You can also look online at literally millions of shared Scratch programs, and if you like, you can join the Scratch community. You can just sit back and watch this show, or you can go to scratch.mit.edu, click on the Try It Out icon, and have fun learning how to program, too. All of these video challenge lessons and more are available at my programmingforkids.info website and at my programmingforkids.info YouTube channel. The countdown timer at the bottom of the screen shows how long until a program is first run. This show number 21 gives another example of message events and shows that Scratch uses case and sensitive comparisons. I'll get started. To continue introducing message events, I'll create two versions of a program that has three different sprite objects, each with its own unique short melody. The program will repeatedly select a random sprite to play its melody. The first version of the program will use backdrops to indicate which melody to play. The second version will use message events to indicate which melody to play. First, I'll need three sprites to each play their own melody. I'll use the cat to play one melody, so I'll create two more sprites. I'll go to New Sprite, Butterfly 1. New Sprite, find Penguin, Penguin 1. I'll create the Penguin's melody. I'll go to Sound. First I want Set Tempo. Set Tempo specifies how fast the instrument plays based on beats per minute. This isn't beats of a drum. It's the beats of the instrument, whether it's a play drum or play note. The drum has several sounds. I can run the block, hear one drum beat. I can choose a different drum instrument. How about a cymbal crash? Very different. And another one. I'll use claves for the penguin. Click on it. A little bit of a quieter sound to listen to. I'm going to want four drum beats. Duplicate. Duplicate the two. Now I have four. So I'll use the clave. I want to get four rhythmic beats out of this. Change the first one to one. Something a little interesting. About a half a beat, 0 0.5. Next one, 0 0.5. And the last one will be two beats. Now I have one, two, two and two is four. Four beats for this. I'll play it. I can make it go a little faster. I'll change 60 beats per minute to 76. Run it. That's a little faster. I can make it even faster. Run it. I'll use that as my little melody for the penguin. I'll go to the butterfly. Let the butterfly set the tempo. I want the butterfly to play some of Ode to Joy melody. I'll need 15 notes. I'll get a note. Most will have a beat of one. I can play it right now. Okay. Copy. Copy. I want 15 total. There's four. 
8, 1 less than 8, 7 8 is 15. A couple E's and an F. E, E, F, a couple G's, an F, and an E, a D, a couple C's, and a D, D, lower C, lower C, up to D, two E's, Two D's. The rhythms are all the same except the last three, like this two beats, half a beat, 0 0.5, one and a half beats, 1.5. This will be close enough. Give it a try. Sounds pretty good, but that's really slow. Try 92. That's better. I'll go to the cat now. Cat. Set tempo. The cat will play a little bit of Frere Jacques. Huh? I want eight notes. I'll get one, change beats to one. I'll need eight notes. Duplicate two, duplicate four, duplicate eight. I want F, G, A, F, G, A, then F, F, G. Good. I'll play it. That was good, but slow. Try 90. Mm, better. Make sure it's even more different from the others. 120. That sounds good. When the sprites are playing, they each set the tempo. I'm going to make tempo visible. I'll bring the monitor over. This way I can see the different values when they're playing. Each sprite has its own melody. Now to get them to play, I'll have the stage object orchestrate the playing. <laughs> Sorry about that one. I'll go to stage. Now I have the stages scripts, events, green flag, First, I can have the stage change the backdrop, and each sprite can play when its unique backdrop appears. I need three backdrops. I'll get one for the cat, new backdrop, indoors, room three. One for the butterfly, new backdrop, scroll down for woods, there's woods. And the last one, new backdrop, outdoors. Use winter for the penguin. I'll go to the penguin scripts. Penguin scripts. When the backdrop switches, switches to winter. Great. When the backdrop switches to winter, it'll play its melody. I'll go to the butterfly. When the backdrop switches to woods, the butterfly will play its melody. Cat. When the backdrop switches to room three, there, it'll play its melody. Now I need the stage to randomly select backdrops so the sprites will play their songs. I'll go back to stage, looks, I'll get switch backdrop and wait. I can use the pull down menu, but I can also use a variable with a value. Data, make a variable. I'll call it backdrop. 
Several sprites, okay. I'll bring backdrop over to show the variable works. I can set backdrop. I've got winter showing right now. What if I set it to room three? And I switch backdrop to backdrop. I'll click on it. The backdrop switched to room three, and the cat played its melody, Frere Jaca. I can change this to woods. Click on it. Or winter. Run it. All three of the sprites are playing their melodies. It's working nicely up to this point. How to pick a random backdrop. I could pick a random number from 1 to 3. Operators. Pick a random number. 3. Clicking on this will give me different numbers. 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, <laughs> 2. There's 1. <laughs> I could use cascading if else's. If 1 is picked, change to woods. Else if 2 is picked, change to winter. Else change to room 3. I've used this approach in earlier challenges, but then I replaced it with something better. I've shown that I can use variable values, so I can also use list values. I'll get rid of the variable values. Whoops, we'll keep the backdrop. Get rid of random pick. I'll create a list with backdrop names and randomly pick a list item to switch to. I'll go to data and I'll make a list called backdrops. For all sprites, OK. And initialization, I want to delete all. I'll need to add my backdrop names. Duplicate, duplicate. First one can be room three. Next can be woods and winter. Click on the green flag. I see the items in the list. This looks good. I'll remove this and the backdrop from the stage. Now to switch the backdrop based on the list values. I want an item. I want a random item. Drop it in. When I click on this, I have woods. back at a short winter. It is picking backdrops, even if it does pick backdrops it's already using. Next I want to position the sprites on the stage. A sprite should be visible on the stage only when it's playing its melody. I have winter for the penguin. I'll kind of center the penguin there. Go to events. When the green flag is clicked, make a little bit of room. Go to motion. Go to XY. That now has the penguin's position. I don't want the penguin to be visible initially, only when it's playing its song. I'll go to Looks, Hide, do that first. When the green flag is clicked, the penguin will hide. Make sure it's in the right position. I'll copy this to the other sprites. Save a little bit of work. Go to the butterfly. Move the code down. Back to motion. First for the butterfly. It would be nice to see the butterfly's backdrop. I'll go to stage. Backdrops. Woods. Now I can position the butterfly. I'll go back to stage. Get the cat's backdrop. I'll move the cat over to here. Each sprite in its own position. Go back to scripts. The cat. Set its XY position. Get rid of the old. Butterfly. Its XY position. Get rid of the old. When the green flag is clicked, all the sprites will hide and go to their proper location. Now I need to switch the backdrops. 
I'll go to stage. All the stage needs to do is to repeatedly loop, changing the backdrop. Go to control, forever. Is this program correct? Will it play the melodies and show only the sprite that's playing it? Here's the cats, the butterflies, and the penguins. They all hide initially. Will this work right? No, it's not going to. All the sprites hide, but they never show again. The sprites won't be visible when the backdrop switches for them to play their melody. I'll go back to Looks. Show at the beginning. Hide when they're finished playing. Butterfly. Show. Hide. Cat. Show. Hide. Slide up a little bit. I'll go back to stage. When the green flag is clicked, the backdrops list will be set up, and the stage will repeatedly keep switching to random backdrops. Sometimes the same backdrop as was previously played, but still randomly chosen. Each sprite will play its particular melody, be visible while it's playing, and disappear when it's finished. Try running the program. Make sure it's stopped. Green flag. There's the penguin. The cat. And again, I'll stop it now. There is one interesting thing to think about. Each of these sprites runs something when the green flag is clicked. The three sprites hide and set their initial position. The stage creates a list and starts generating new backdrops. The assumption here is that the three sprites will finish their green flag handlers all before the stage has finished creating the list and starts switching to backdrops. This shows how it's a race as to which object goes first, sprite or stage. There's no guarantee the stage won't start changing backdrops before all the sprites are finished. This illustrates a general problem, how to coordinate independent objects so all are working together. This is a fundamental programming issue. This issue is not limited to Scratch. This problem must be carefully addressed in other programming languages too, like Java and C++. Anywhere there are multiple threads of execution. In Scratch, each sprite and stage object has its own thread of execution. Each runs independently of the other objects and possibly at the same time as one or more of the other objects. Two sprites could be running their handlers at the same time. So how could I coordinate initializing the sprites and be certain all are initialized? I'm using backdrops to coordinate the sprites. I could use another backdrop to coordinate initialization. I could use backdrop 1 to let the sprites know they need to initialize. If the stage has backdrop 1 always set initially, all the sprites can use that for initialization. Go to events, when backdrop switches to backdrop 1, initialize. It doesn't need the green flag. I can do the same thing for the butterfly. Backdrop 1, get rid of the green flag, and the cat. When backdrop 1, oh, there it is down there, it's hiding it. Backdrop 1, now when the program runs, stage sets the list, switches to backdrop 1, and waits for the sprites. Each of the sprites, in whatever order they happen to run, will make sure they're hiding and go to their proper position when backdrop 1 is selected. Then after all the sprites are initialized, the program will loop, switching the backdrops. I'll run this now. Make sure it stopped. Penguin worked. And the butterfly worked. Good enough, I'll stop it. Using the changing backdrop as an event for a sprite action works, but it has one fundamental limitation. It needs the stage's image, the backdrop, to change. Instead of communicating through backdrops, the stage and sprite objects could communicate with messages. Messages can be used anytime without the side effect of changing the stage's image. I'll change the program to use messages. 
It'll be easier to understand if the messages give the name of the sprite to play its song instead of a backdrop name. I'll go to Data. I won't use the backdrops list. I'll make a new list. I'll call it Sprites. For all sprites, OK. I'll save the current code. Duplicate. Something to reference. Instead of backdrops. Sprites. 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 Instead of room 3, I'll say cat. Butterfly. And penguin. I'll worry about initialization in a little bit. I want events. Broadcast and wait. If I try to create a message now, it'll disappear when I go to another sprite. I need to first create the sprite's handlers. I'll go to cat. When I receive a message, instead of message one, I'll call this cat. Okay. When the cat receives the cat message, I want the cat to play the melody. Get rid of this. Very little change here. Same thing for butterfly. Create butterfly. New message. OK. When I receive the butterfly, When a butterfly receives a butterfly message, it'll play its melody. Penguin. When I receive new message, penguin. OK. The penguin will play its melody. I'll go back to stage and see about broadcasting a message now. I want to use the list, data, item, random from sprites. Drop it in. I'll get rid of switch backdrops. The sprites will need to set their own backdrop now before they play their song since the stage isn't setting the backdrop anymore. I'll go to cat, looks, switch backdrop, Cat wants room three. Move this down. What about initialization? I'm not going to be getting a backdrop switch anymore for initialization. It should be another message. I'll go to events. When I receive, create a new message. Call it initialize. OK. Use it instead of the backdrop one to initialize. Stage will first have to broadcast initialize. All the sprites will hide and set their position. Then the loop will determine which particular sprite is going to play. The sprite will set the backdrop, become visible, play its song, and hide. I'll go to butterfly. When I receive, initialize. Hide, go to my position, looks, switch backdrop to woods. One more, the penguin. Penguin will switch the backdrop to winter. Already set. Go to events. When I receive initialize, it'll initialize. Go to the stage now. It has a loop for broadcasting and waiting for each melody. It needs to broadcast a message to initialize. Broadcast and wait on initialize. I'll run it. Make sure it's stopped. Go. List is good. Playing the right song. Yeah, <laughs> choosing the same one again. And <laughs> a third time. <laughs> and again. That was good. Program's working nicely. 
Another nice thing about using messages in this example is that the stage doesn't need to know information about the sprite, like what backdrop it's going to use. Each sprite object knows what it wants and is free to change it. The stage will tell the sprite when to play. If the sprite changes its backdrop code, the stage doesn't have to change since the sprite has all its own code. This is encapsulation. The object has all of its information and can make changes much more easily. I don't have to search all throughout the large program trying to find cat, butterfly, or penguin information elsewhere. The cat sprite has the cat code, the butterfly sprite has the butterfly code, and the penguin sprite has the penguin code. I'm finished with this challenge. I encourage you to play with this program and get more experience with messages and lists. Try changing the program. Try modifying the stage code to not repeat playing the last song that was played. Or try adding another sprite with a new melody. It's important that you work with the program and get experience with messages and lists. Have fun. This is a Pico challenge, and this is Pico. A Pico is one trillionth. That's 10 to the minus 12. 12 zeros. A Pico is a very small number, so this is a very short challenge. Be sure you remember that Scratch matches upper and lowercase characters when it compares strings. It is case insensitive. For example, a capital M matches a lowercase m, and Mike with a capital M matches Mike with capital KE. I'll show this in Scratch now. This is a Pico challenge, so I'll get rid of the cat, right click delete, new sprite, fantasy, I'll get Pico. There's Pico. I'll go to operators and get the equal comparison. I'll try a capital M with a lowercase m. Try it. True. Uppercase matches lowercase. I'll try the other example. Use Mike with a capital M and Mike with capital KE. Try it. It matches too. I'm finished with this Pico challenge. Play with the equals operator if this is new to you and have fun with it. I'm glad you could join me. You can review these and all of my challenges at my programmingforkids.info website and on my programmingforkids.info YouTube channel. I encourage you to try the things you've just learned and explore the extra challenges I've suggested. I hope you can join me for the other shows. Until next time, have fun being creative.